An intron is a sequence in the RNA that gets removed in splicing. Okay. Okay. Um, Ribosomal RNAs aren't shown here. I'll briefly tell you that ribosomal RNAs in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes get modified slightly. They're modified slightly, but not as much as the tRNAs or, in the case of the eukaryotes, the messenger RNAs. Okay? Yes? That's a good question. The cap uh, is put on uh, almost as early as the transcription itself starts. Okay? And splicing can actually start while the um, uh, poly-A tail is being put on. So splicing, uh, all these things that I'm happening, these modifications I'm describing here, all happen in the nucleus. So splicing happens there, capping happens there, and the polyadenylation happens there. All these things have to happen there because the processed messenger RNA in the eukaryote has to make it out into the cytoplasm to be translated. So all these things have to precede that. But the earliest event is the capping. The other two can be variable. Okay, well, we've got about five minutes, and as I will, am want to do, I will start one more thing, and then we will finish. Okay, we'll talk about very general things here. Translation. I said that the central dogma had three components. We said we had the DNA replication, we had transcription, and now we're on the last component, which is translation. By the way, we're now in new material for the third exam. Okay, so we finished the material for the second exam. Translation is an amazingly orchestrated process okay, that uh, starts uh, with something called amino acid activation. Amino acid activation. What is involved in amino acid activation? Well, translation, I think you've seen in your cell biology classes and also from what I've alluded to here. Translation happens, the synthesis of protein happens in ribosomes. What this figure is telling you is the process actually starts before things get to the ribosome. The process starts when transfer RNAs get attached to amino acids. That's known as amino acid activation. The function of transfer RNAs is to carry amino acids to the ribosome to be translated. So if we don't have amino acids on the transfer RNAs, we're not going to have any translation. Got to have that happen. Okay? So the first step is putting those amino acids on there. Okay? After we get that going, we have a ribosome that grabs all the various components and starts the process. Well, I'll give you some details next time on how that process uh, proceeds. Okay? We have to start the process of translation. As I said, with transcription, we have initiation, we have elongation, we have termination. These three here are all happening in the ribosome. This is happening before the ribosome. Okay. The genetic code. This is the last thing I'll say today. The genetic code is the way that the cell knows to put together amino acids corresponding to DNA in this case, RNA sequence. DNA specify the RNA, the RNA has the information. Okay. A sequence of UUU in the, the uh, messenger RNA will tell the cell this is a phenylalanine that's supposed to go here. A CUU will tell the cell this is a leucine that has to go here. The information in the genetic code is written in bases of three called codons. Codons are sequences that are found, and you want to underline this, in messenger RNA. Codons are sequences found in messenger RNA. So I'm reading a sequence from the messenger RNA when I'm doing that. There are 64 possible codons. Okay. There are four very special codons. One's called a start codon. This codon always tells the ribosome the first amino acid to put in. The first amino acid to put in is always the same one. Okay? It is AUG, which is right here. It's got a little asterisk beside it. AUG is always the first amino acid that's put into a protein, and AUG 
uh, I'm sorry, methionine is always, uh, back up, I said that wrong. Methionine is always the first amino acid put into a protein, and AUG specifies methionine. Okay? The cell knows this is the place it starts making a protein when it sees that AUG in the messenger RNA. Okay? I said there are four special codons. The other three are all called stop codons because they tell the cell, they tell the ribosome, stop reading the message here and let go of the protein. Stop codons, and yes, I think you should know these four special codon sequences. AUG is a, an important sequence to know, it's a start. UAA, which is, uh, where's it at? Right there. UAG and UGA, which is right here, are all stop codons. When the ribosome reads these sequences, it says, oh, we're done, and it lets the protein go, and everybody's happy. Okay. I'll say more about the genetic code next time. Hope you guys have a fun mom's weekend, and um, I shall see you, see you on Monday. Not mom's. Yes, sir. Amino acid activation. What was the definition you gave to that? So it's when the amino acid gets attached to the specific transfer RNA. Okay. That's, that's it. That's it. And then... Uh, is it important to know that three different stops what, what kind of uh, base it is? Is it like or uh, that? Well, there's not. You see, it's a stop. Okay. So it means if it coded for, for an amino acid, then it wouldn't be a stop. Okay. So it, this actually is literally like a stop sign. It says stop, and then everything stops. Okay? okay? It's, it's, it's a good question. The redundancy um, is there because it partly reduces the significance of mutation. For some of these, you can have mutation in the third base. It doesn't change a thing. So that's probably why. The other is it only takes 20 amino acids to make a protein. There's no way using three or two bases to specify 20 things. So, it, they, yeah, it, it, digital information is that way, I guess. So, so that, that, that's, that's, the re that's the two reasons why. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, in prokaryotes, the closer the tartar box is to their enhancer, the more RNA polymerase binds to it, right? Do eukaryotes no. not enhancers, but they're. Uh, oh, you mean the closer the sequence is to the tartar yes. box? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Does it behave the same way for um, eukaryotes? Uh, with it eukaryotes, it's much more confusing. Um, the uh, you don't have the, the, quite the same conservation that you have in prokaryotes. That's one thing. And the other thing that happens is there are eukaryotic genes that don't have tata boxes at all. Now, what you do see, though, is wherever you have a gene in eukaryotes that is made at high levels, it has some kind of a tata box. So that's about as much as you can say. Okay. Thank you.